Hey there, and welcome to the Big Girl School Book Club. If you are just joining us, we are studying Roberto Valenzuela's Picture Perfect Practice. And the whole point of this book club is to try to develop our eye so that when we're out shooting photographs, we're not just worrying about our camera technicalities, but we're also looking for elements in the scene that's going to better our composition, um, just make us recognize things that will make our pictures better. So if you're just joining us, uh, this week we're on um, chapter five, which is color elements. But if you want to go back, um, we've studied geometry, parallel lines, balance, and um, symmetry so far. So all of the previous videos are on IGTV, and they're also on YouTube, and you can find them in our private Facebook group, the uh, Big Girl School Community. So this week is all about uh, color elements, and really the color elements that we're going to be talking about, um, Roberto talks about how color elements specifically in the background can either enhance our subject or can distract from our subject. So he specifically points out how primary colors, red, green, and blue, have such an impact with the eye that if not used properly in the background, they can really distract our eye. And I've pulled some examples um, from my own work to show you how he's absolutely 100% correct. Um, and then he also talks about keeping contrasting colors to a minimum and then keeping colors as part of the same color family. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk through his examples. I pulled some examples from my own photography um, to show you what works, what doesn't work, and to show you examples of what he's talking about. So um, let's go ahead and dive into the examples and I will try to explain it a little bit more. All right, let's go ahead and dig into some of my example pictures. So this I took in 2005. I was just learning photography, so hopefully you'll see that I've grown through the examples that I give you. But I thought this was a really good example of when he says that primary colors, red, green, and blue, when used improperly in the background, can really distract from your subject. So this is my daughter who's now in college, but you can see that um, she's the subject. Now there's a lot of things wrong with this particular picture, but you can see, look, I've got blue in the background, I've got red in the, in the background, I've got red and blue over here, I've got green, I've got a lot going on here. So there's people distracting in the background, she's not zoomed in close enough, there's too many colors in the background, um, specifically primary color. So this is what he's talking about, is looking out for these colors, they're gonna take away from your subject. Now, she's also underexposed, there's a lot of things wrong. But if I, had I gone in there and just sort of zoomed in and gotten rid of maybe some of these colors, you know, had I um, kind of cropped here and cropped here, I could have brought a lot more subject to her specifically. So just, you know, keep that in mind when you are um, composing and cropping your images. Now here's a more recent example. This is my other daughter, Cameron, and this was just on the beach. It wasn't a formal photo shoot or anything like that. So I wasn't necessarily thinking about some of these things, but notice how I could have made the photograph so much better because I think she looks adorable. Um, I love this picture of her, but if you use what Roberto was saying, let's look in the background. So I've got a bright green beach chair right here. I've got a red, probably a tent roof. Now I've done a good job blurring out the background for to some extent, but these colors still come through. So I've got a bright aqua blue, I've got a red, I've got a bright green, I've got some peach here, I've got a blue chair, I've got these legs here, that's just an obvious no-no. But instead of you know just bringing all the attention to her and how adorable she looks, I've got all this competing information in the background. So um, you know, had I moved maybe and shot this way into this part of the background, I could have gotten rid of some of this distraction in the background, specifically the colors, because you can see there's nothing as far as colors go right here. So that would be one way to improve this particular photo. Here's another example of her from the same day. Again, I wasn't really thinking about, I was. these weren't formal pictures, they were just snapshots, but even snapshots, you can make them better. And so notice you've got 
a bright blue shirt right behind her. You've got green, you've got blue, you've got the bright sand. So there's a lot going on in the background. And even though I've used a lens that blurs out the background, that helps a little bit. But the colors are still just distracting from what is actually a really cute picture of her. So um, just keep this in mind. Even when you're doing snapshots, even if it's not something important, you can always make it better by keeping your, uh, keeping your eye on the background and looking at colors that are going to distract from your subject. Now, one of the examples he used specifically was, say you're shooting a high school senior and there's a stop sign in the background. I'm like, well, I've got an example of that. So, oops, let's take a look at this. Um, I actually did a before and after picture here, but you can see I've got this this picture and I thought it was really cute of uh, Caroline and there's really not a lot of colors in the background there's green which looks nice with the peach of her outfit but you've got this uh, do not enter sign right here which is super distracting your eye kind of goes right there and you know that it really it doesn't look great even though it's blurry so in my final photo I um, just cloned a little bit of the tree and I cloned over that stop sign just to get rid of it because I knew that my eye was going to go straight to that sign. So by using a little Photoshop, um, I was able just to take a little piece of that tree and clone it out and get rid of that extra color in the background. Um, here's another example. Oops, hold on. Here's another example from the same photo shoot. Um, he mentioned, you know, primary colors in the background, red, blue, green. Um, he also mentioned orange. Um, so notice in this one, I've got this big orange kind of bucket or flower pot. This is not one of the pictures that made the final cut um, because you can see instead of your eye going straight to her, it kind of goes down here to this orange pot and it it distracts from the main subject. So start to train your eye to see some of these distracting colors and either, you know, if you love the picture, try to crop it out or clone it out. Um, but if you can avoid it in the first place, try not to get it in the uh, straight out of camera picture. Um, and so what he says is try to develop selective vision. So one of the ways as you get better as a photographer is not only to know your camera and know how to take the picture and get proper exposure, but also to notice things in the background that are going to um, distract from the final image. So um, one of the things that he said, or one of the sections was to keep contrasting colors to a minimum. So looking for colors that are all kind of cohesive. So I pulled some examples from my work. So you can see here, this is my neighbor, Abby, and she had a cute pink shirt on and the pink trees were blooming. Um, it's one of my favorite trees in their yard. So every year I try to take some pink flower pictures. And here you can see I've got, you know, pink petals on the ground in the background, a pink shirt, she's holding the pink flowers. The only really other color in the photo is maybe her fingernails and the brown in the background, but really it's all about the pink story. So there's nothing in the background that's taking away from the story I'm trying to tell. Oops, hold on. Now I've got, um, this was taken in the desert and he actually showed a desert wedding photo as an example where he said he was looking around um, the venue and there was all this artwork, but it wasn't big enough to use as a background. There was all this different green grass, competing colors. So he looked around and he found a scene very similar to the one that you see here, where it was all this earthy tones. Um, so here we were in the desert in Palm Springs and Cameron had bought this really pretty, um, kind of floral, earthy dress, and she really kind of wanted to like a little Coachella feel. So she had this cute hat. Um, we had the desert as a background. So all the, co the color palette all goes together. There's no color here. The color in the background completely adds to the story of her hat, her makeup, her dress. The whole look and feel of the photo goes together. There's nothing that's going to take your eye away from her. Now here's another example. This was a sunrise sunset that, or a sunrise shoot that we did. And Bridget was, we were on the beach here in Georgia, which tends to have kind of a more of a reddish uh, look and feel to it because of the red clay here in Georgia. And so she had on this um, kind of peachy orange, earthy 
dress, the sun, the golden sun was coming up. It was very early in the morning. Her hair is very um, um, auburn. Um, so the sand, the dress, the sun, and her auburn hair, the colors all kind of tell one cohesive story. There's nothing in the background that's taking away from the color story that we're telling in this photo. Again, here, this is another senior shoot, and I loved how the bridge really, um, the, dr the dress she was wearing, the color of her hair, the color on the trees, and the bridge all were kind of in the same color scheme, and it really told a cohesive story. Um, so I loved, when I looked at this, I said, you know, I just absolutely loved the colors, and I was so glad she chose that dress. I really didn't come up with that. But we were really lucky that the bridge and the dress and her hair just really went together so well. And you'll notice there's nothing in the background that takes away from her. All the focus is on her. Even the bridge kind of comes in and focuses on her. So we've got a little bit of parallel lines. We've got some leading lines. We've got some geometry going on here. So we talked a little bit as we go, you're going to start to see pictures that fall into more than one category. So we talked about geometry the first week. Well, geometry applies here. Now we're talking about color. We're talking about balance, symmetry. So there's a lot of things going on in this photo that we've talked about in previous chapters. So as you train your eye, you're going to start to notice these things. So, you know, it may not fall into one category. There may be a lot of categories that come together to really make um, a dynamic photo. So here's another one um, out in Aspen in the winter. So there wasn't a lot of color. So you can see that um, this is Heidi. She teaches personal branding photography. And I was out taking her photo. And, you know, the cream-colored coat, the, um, the brush in the background, the color of her hair, the sun was setting, which really gave her some really nice light in her hair. Everything came together for a really nice, cohesive color story. And again, there's no color in the background that's taking away from her. So even the... Um, the gray of her uh, tank top even kind of goes with the gray in the rocks. We've got the color here in her jacket that's going with the color here. The color of her hair goes back here. The golden, uh, the golden brush here kind of goes with the golden sun in her hair. So everything just works together. Nothing is taking away from her. Again, um, here's another senior shoot. So this is Emma, and she had beautiful auburn hair. She had this really nice cream-colored sweater, and we found this brick, and it, we just knew that the colors all went together, and her mom was like, you got to go over there by that brick wall because it's going to look so good with your hair and your sweater and the color of your skin. So again, the brick adds texture. It adds um, a little something to the photo, but it doesn't distract from her. It's all about her beautiful hair and her um, beautiful cheekbones and the color of her skin. So same thing here, we've got, we're back to um, Haley and she changed and put on a really pretty, um, we were in the fall, so she had this really pretty fall colored shirt and we went in this coffee shop and here the brick and the shirt kind of all worked together and the warm lights, um, everything really went together to make um, a beautiful color story. There's really nothing in the background that distracts it. Um, here's Cameron again. We were down at the High Museum in Atlanta, and she just had on this really soft gray sweater. She had really pretty soft makeup on, um, and we just found this little alleyway with pretty light concrete. So look, all the grays, the cool tones, it kind of all went together to just tell this really soft, pretty story. Um, and you know what? This works. This is something I've just learned. Um, I've I've only really started shooting in the studio probably in the last couple of years. And one thing I learned is about coordinating the color and tone of the background to the wardrobe. That makes a huge difference. It makes it look like kind of random. I've done, I've shot like on a background where the clothing tones and colors don't go with the background and it looks sort of random, like you don't know what you're doing. But you can see here like this nice cool gray with this cool gray and black shirt with her skin tone. It looks like it really goes together really well. Here we've got this warm background with this cream colored shirt and the pretty color of her skin and hair. It all goes together and really works. And this particular backdrop, I've seen it with other colors and if it's not a jewel tone 
or really the colors you see here, it's not a very nice backdrop. So if you have the right colors, it makes all the difference. Now the next thing that he talked about is using um, the three color limit. And so um, he has a little technique, and this is part of his assignment that he wants you to do, is to look for colors in the background by throwing your camera out of focus and looking for all the different colors. So before we get into the three color limit, let's jump over. This was a, a picture I took at a fair, and it was actually an accident. I was um, up on the top of the slide, and I went to go take a picture of kind of the whole fair, and it just happened to be out of focus. But this is a great example of when it's out of focus, you can um, focus on just the different colors in the photo. So look over here, we've got we've got a little bit of reddish, maroonish pink. We've got some orange, we've got green, we've got blue, green, yellow. Um, we've got orange, we've got all these bright lights. So if I were to photograph a person in front of this, this may or may not be a great place to photograph because everything that's going on in the background might really take away from my subject. Um, of course, there's exceptions to these rules, but by, he uses this method where he throws it out of focus by putting it on manual focus and then just turning the knob as far as it'll go to get it out of focus. And then he looks at just the colors. So you... You're not looking at the actual object. Now, obviously, you can tell this is a Ferris wheel, but we're, we're getting rid of the, the, the literal object, and we're just looking at the colors. And so we're saying, are there more than three colors in this photo? If there are, you know, that's potentially going to distract from your subject. So let's jump back and look at some of the examples I pulled that have uh, just three colors. So here in the background, you see I've got this yellow, maroon, and green. And um, using framing and geometry and parallel lines plus the three colors, this kind of all comes together. The earthy tones don't distract from the subject. Um, it actually kind of brings focus to the Bama Bound sign. This red ties in nicely with this red. The green is a nice balance to the red. The, the yellow tones, it all kind of goes together. Um, and this is a picture that definitely builds on some chapters prior to um, this chapter. Now um, here you can see I've got the green and yellow of the sunflowers and the blue of her outfit and the gold of the sun. So the gold and the yellow of the sunflowers from the sun and the sunflowers and then the green and the blue are kind of contrasting, but really there's nothing else in this photo, so it's very clear who the subject is. Now here's another one. This is my uh, daughter Haley walking, and you can see that, you know, this really the main focus is the red, and then the only other real color is the color of her dress, and maybe some of the colors in the reflections here, but there's not a lot of, um, not I guess there's some flowers here, but they don't really distract. We've got some white, a little bit of purple, yellow, but some of those colors, like this purple goes with her dress. Um, but the main focus is really highlighting this red wall. Now here we've got simply two colors. Uh, we've got the color of her pink uh, dress and we've got the green background. And so this really makes her pop. Um, and we've got the nice motion and movement in her hair that makes it a little bit more dynamic. But it's very simple. Um, don't think you have to make your photographs super complicated. Um, two colors, a simple background, a little bokeh, a little sunshine goes a long way. Oops, hold on. Uh, here's another one. We've kind of got the green, blue, and yellow. We've got three colors. It all comes together. There's some nice leading lines here framing her. There's a little geometry framing her. Um, but overall, the color story is very simple and it brings all the focus onto her. Again, same thing, we've got blue and gold. Two colors here, maybe a little bit of gray. And all we really see is the beautiful sunlight, the blue Villanova, and the blue car. So keeping it very, very simple. Again, we've got um, just using red in the background to make the kitty pop. She's got red on her collar. We've got a lot of parallel lines here. Um, very simple. 
blurring out the background, using color to, to make it pop. Another example of using color here. I'm going to go ahead and jump here. Um, here's another example of uh, changing, you know, the guards out of side of Buckingham Palace. We have a very simple, almost no color background. So just the simple little pop of color in his jacket is all you need, and it brings focus straight to him. So your all your eye goes directly towards him, and all the rest of this is pretty simple. If you look close, there are some people back here, but I had to really look to see that. So um, really the use of red is what brings here. Now there's a couple exceptions. I think um, if I look at, um, let me see if this will work, there we go. So you can see the composition on this, which is kind of just lucky. Uh, this is the golden spiral, so if you follow the spiral, all the balls kind of follow the spiral. And then the colors um, just lead your eye around. So this one is an example of way more than three colors, but he does have an example of where you can break the rules. So I've got lots and lots of color in this picture. The color is really the story, but because the composition is pretty cool with the golden spiral and your eye kind of follows the balls around the room to see what's going on, I think this is a great rule breaker. Um, here's another, oops, what happened there? Um, here's another one. Um, we've got a little triangle here, so we have some geometry. We've got green and yellow in the background, but this little pop of red, the third color, really takes your eye straight to the shoes. So that's another great way to use color in your photos. So let me know if you have any questions. Uh, Roberto's assignment is to take your camera, throw it out of focus, and look for different colors in the background and decide are they adding to your subject or distracting from your subject, and really train your eye to look for color and look for distractions in the background. And then my assignment is just to uh, use color in the background or use uh, I think you should take one picture using kind of like that desert picture where everything is sort of the same color. Let's go back to that really quick. Where you sort of have unifying colors and the colors all go together, like all earthy tones or all pastels or all primary colors or bright colors. Um, do one of those and then do one where you limit yourself to three colors and see uh, what kind of examples you can come up with. I can't wait to see what you guys do. You can post your pictures in Instagram and tag The Big Girl School, or you can post them in our private Facebook group, The Big Girl School Community. We'd love to see what you come up with and feature you if possible. Thanks so much. Bye.